I finally managed to build myself an XT system. And really, I've been waiting for this occasion for about six years now. So I already had a number of parts I was ready to build from. But I got the machine for 50 bucks. I paid, oh God, over 100 bucks for the damn monitor. It's an IBM 5153, so CGA is a bit more in demand. And then there's this, which cost me $5. And this is a keyboard, I mean, maybe for you geek hack people, you're going to be like, oh my god, it's a Model F. Let me go into a bit more detail about this keyboard first off. Um, okay, there's a version of the XT here which has an IBM 3270 emulation host card and a couple of other boards. It takes up a fair amount of the system. But you can work just with the keyboard controller card, with an exception, but I'll get to that in a minute. And you have this beautifully massive keyboard that you can work with. And it has, it has all the keys you need on your conventional IBM keyboard, and it has all the other ones you need for the 3270 emulation. And a couple of keys have moved around. For example, um, the escape key is now way the hell up here. The control key is way the hell over here. And we have stuff like, where's this reset key that's sitting here, and a couple other keys that we don't really need. PF1 to PF9, I believe it was, or PF10. Those are our function keys. All these other ones here, well, according to DOS, you can't actually see them like this little middle button right here, but, or I love this little squiggly A. Where's that focus? Oh, apparently I won't, there we go. Like squiggly A, like this is a cool little key, but it's totally unusable in DOS because it's not really mapped. That being said, all the scan codes are decoded from this using the keyboard controller and are available for um, application use if necessary. But anyways, let's get back to the system here. So we have our 5153 monitor and down here we have the actual XT machine with its 360k drive and a 10 megabyte mini scribe drive. This is all original stuff here. So this is kind of nice when I got it. So that was well worth the price. Now we're gonna to go to the back. Now, I've been working with uh, PCs and collecting hardware for this stuff for a good 15 years now. So I have a good stockpile of parts to build from. Hi game, there we go. So, boom. And this is the special cable. There's a metal connector in the middle of it. Then you have this little dongle here. This goes to your keyboard controller, which can actually converts the scan code apparently. And then this plugs into the keyboard port on the machine. And yeah, nothing simple here, just a regular CGA cable here, nine pin, blah, blah, blah. But here's what we have currently installed in the machine that makes it so nice. Um, keyboard controller is right here. It actually has this, you can just kind of see the reflection here of the uh, cable required for it. We have our HEI, um, Video Wonder Graphics Solution version 2. Currently set for CGA mode, does have composite out if I need it. IBM's floppy drive controller, 360K, nothing special. The hard disk controller, MFM, again, nothing special. AST 6-pack plus. Um, I don't have the parallel port cable running out, but it will go over to this little breakout header box over here. We have a sound blaster in it for the hell of it. We also have networking, and because I've run out of expansion space here and 10 megs on a hard disk isn't going to last me too long, especially for stuff like 88 corruption or just larger files and stuff like that, compilers and the likes. I have a SCSI card installed in this as well. So some of the drivers still need to be loaded for this, but we're all ready to go here. And in fact, let me um, take a break here and we're going to power the machine up. And so here we are, we're all set up again. Um, I've just angled the monitor so you can get a better view of the screen here. I'll try and uh, control the brightness as we get through this here, but I'll just do a quick demonstration of the system turning on a couple of applications I have on here. There we go. Now, a light also turned on for the monitor at the same time instead of me touching the power switch. That's because this power supply has a uh, switch pass-through on it, and I actually have the cable that goes from the machine into the monitor. It's kind of like what you have with the uh, 5151 monochrome monitor, except that it's an optional cable. It's going to take a while to count up here as well, so I'll talk about other stuff. Yeah, 640K is currently installed in this thing thanks to the AST 6-Pack Plus. That's also giving me a real-time clock as well. It's strongly recommended if you get a PC or you want to build one, get a 6-Pack Plus or some sort of clone because it'll give you the RAM expansion, it'll give you the memory, or, yeah, the RAM expansion, the clock. It'll usually give you a serial port and a parallel port. This one in particular also has a game port. However, I believe the Sound Blaster card's MIDI port also doubles as a game port as well, so I don't have it enabled currently. And it's going to give me a uh, beep error and say 2801. Like I said, there is the keyboard controller card for this giant Model F here, and what's happening is that it's looking for the other ho um, cards for the 3270 set in here. 
which is the uh, host interface and I believe like the programmable symbols option and a couple other things. But it, like it can't find them, so it gives me this error. But it's a non-fatal error, so I just have to live with pressing F time F1 every single time I boot. So I'll start that up. And I haven't really messed with the operating system since I got this machine. And someone was crazy enough to install um, IBM PC DOS 4. And at least the AST clock and all that comes up. And we have a hard disk menu and utility here. But I'm not going to use that in this particular case. So I'll X out of that. And the first program here I'm going to quickly show off is um, Voitra's Sequencer Plus. Just for the Sound Blaster card here. I'm just going to put that in. Go. And now the um, configuration jumpers in the Sound Blaster card are totally defaulted. So, like, I can. So, when I load up the Sound Blaster driver here, it'll detect it and we'll be all ready to go. So, it's uh, tap esb.com.com. And that's the great thing about some of this hardware here. Some of it does require drivers like the SCSI card, but there's stuff like this here where I just simply pump data to a particular um, memory address or, or port or using a particular IRQ and it just works which is kind of cool but yeah uh, we'll start up uh, the sequencer I'm just going to give you a quick demo here of a bit of MIDI here and it's not anything really all that special it just takes forever to load go and it's kind of a fool thing here it's like oh god is this like a an mda or hercules level thing but no it actually doesn't color and there we go and let me address that so maybe we can see it a bit better is that better for you yeah, it's still pretty bad oh well anyways um files i'm just going to load up a quick sample here uh, load yes i don't care And congratulations, be it I'm doing some sort of composing or I'm just playing a game that supports MIDI, I can, well, enjoy fantastic mid-80s music. And I can also, actually if I want, I can look at the piano here and I'll edit that. And I can see a real-time playing of each note and their lengths and so forth when it's going through it all. And that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, and again, I only loaded one driver for this and the rest of it's just kind of like send memory here and pray. Cool, so I'm just gonna quit out of that. All right, there we go. There we go. And I'll just do one other application here just to give an idea of it. And I actually have this belonged to my uncle, actually, and, well, God bless his soul. Um, this is the actual utility floppy for the ATI card in here. So I get to do a couple of really cool things and look at a couple of really cool things as well. So, uh, load that up. There we go. And I just want to run all test. And this is just simply a nice little test utility. I'm assuming it's a, um, a university utility because it also gives me printer and serial tests, which... I don't really need on this particular model, but I believe there was a model of Sound Blaster, maybe it was, the, or not Sound Blaster, um, ATI video card, maybe it was the EGA Wonder, or one of the earlier versions of this card, which actually had a, at least a parallel port, but no, we'll just do the video test here, um, one, there we go, times want to run, one, whatever, and we'll let that run, there we go, and actually, let me see if I can improve that screen a little bit for you, there we go. There we go. But yeah, um, two particular modes I want to show off. 640 by 200 graphics with 16 colors. And that's pretty hot. Does take a while to draw, but wow. Um, usually when I expect CGA, I only expect stuff like blue, cyan, and red, and magenta, maybe. But yeah, it'll do all 16 colors. I'm surprised. It just shows how long I've been playing with non-PC hardware for a while. So I really don't know what it's like back in this area here, but I'll X out of that. The other thing I want to show you is that... Um, with CGA included light pen support, and I never knew that was possible. And in this particular test here, you can actually use the light pen port on this video card. Unfortunately, I don't have a light pen, so even though it says put the light pen on the blinking box and a star will appear at the same spot, 
put the light pin on the center of this box here to exit, well, I can't actually do anything about that. I want to get myself a light pen. Maybe I can build a light pen. They're really not all that difficult to build. So that'll be a cool little uh, task right there to build. But uh, there. Well, I'll kick out of that. And, well, that's basically all I wanted to show off with the system. So I'm just going to X out of all of those. There we go. And uh, I believe that's it. No, wait, actually, one last thing here. Um, with all modern systems, we don't have to worry too much about uh, what happens to our hard disk when we turn them on. But back in the days of stepper motors, especially very early stepper motors, you spun down the drive, the head stayed wherever the hell it last was. So in this particular case here, I have a utility that parks the heads. And that just simply moves it to a landing zone. Uh, was it park? That's what it is. Disk park, disk head, um, hard disk head park program utility version 1.7, on track computer systems. This program will move the heads on your 213, 225, 238, 225, and basically all of these older drives to their dedicated landing zone. The process is recommended prior to any physical relocation of the computer or removal of the hard disk drives for any reason. You should then turn off the computer after running this program. It's not joking there. I always park my disks whenever I move the machine or store them. It just simply, if the head, um, for any reason, moves back and forth while it's um, not, while the platters are not spinning, it has the potential to damage the uh, disc itself, and then you're going to be totally screwed. But yeah, I'm done. I want to do that. Heads are now parked. Power should now be turned off. And there we go. So that's my system. Um, hope you enjoyed this.